This is the IC Pixels podcast with David and Anthony Cavins. We're going to talk about design in everyday situations. Welcome to the IC Pixel Podcast. This is um, IC Pixels Podcast, rather. This is Anthony, and this is David, and we're back after uh, a week of not being here. Uh, happy Easter to everybody! Uh, hope you enjoyed all the gifts that the bunny rabbit or whatever brought you, or I whatever. Forgot that it was Easter. Um. So in honor of the holiday, I I went to the store this morning and bought stuff to make breakfast. That's that's perfectly fine. Oh. <laughs> I, I knew it was Easter because people at work were talking about they I guess they do a lot of stuff to celebrate it, but like you know, growing up, we never really did much. Like we might have a little Easter egg hunt type of situation, but it was never like yeah. a big complex celebration so uh, I don't know what they was planning but it was they've been talking about it's like Wednesday or Thursday this week talking about how they were running around doing stuff for their wives so they can plan yeah. for Easter and I'm like okay uh, today I know Easter, usually I celebrated I, I cut mm-hmm. my grass and my neighbor okay. said happy Easter to me and then she was like wait a minute do you do you celebrate Easter I was like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Did you see so me cutting she, my grass? What are you talking about? This is how I celebrate. <laughs> I was like, I don't. I didn't ask her any more questions. I was like, yeah, happy Sunday, happy Easter. Because, uh, you know, it's just a regular Sunday for me, for the most part. I did uh, hide some yeah. eggs for my kids to look for. Okay, well, I made I made some eggs yesterday. So... That's kind of the same thing, I guess. Not really? Okay. No. All right, well. So, uh, also, as part of celebrating Easter, I listened to the new Kendrick. Well, I listened to part of the new Kendrick. I'm not finished. Uh, oh. Eh, I've heard oh. maybe two tracks that I like so far. And I'm on really? the track five or six. This is your first listen? Yeah, this is my first listen. Well, that's kind of like expected. I, I, I kind of like the the track with Rihanna. Not a lot, yeah. but it, it's cool. And then I like DNA, and then the rest of them. Yeah, DNA is really good. I thought I think, like um, Element was kind of whack, and then the one before that was kind of whack. I don't remember what they were, but I just remember Element. I didn't like it because oh. his voice is weird, where, and he be talking too much. Where were you when you were listening to it? Sitting at my computer okay I mean if I was in my car with some bass maybe it would be better well not better in a computer because Uh. I don't know okay so I've listened to it all the way through maybe four or five times Um, I do like it I think I mean the first time I listened to it though yeah I mean it takes a moment because you you, because you know him unlike some artists you actually have to pay attention to what he's saying yeah I mean, it's not just all about the song and everything. So, I mean, it all goes together in a, you know, it all plays, you know, the songs all go together. I mean, after you listen to it a couple of times and you'll be like, oh, okay, you'll start, you know, following what he's talking about and everything. But, of course, there are some songs that, you know, DNA, that's what you play in the car, mm-hmm. you know. And there are other songs like that that you play in the car, but then there's other songs that are more, you know, laid back and they just, you know, it's like a cool song to listen to, but you got to, like... I think it all plays together. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I like it though. Oh, I listened to what he was saying, but I didn't see like I don't see no strong connection between these tracks. It's just. I mean, it's uh, not like it's not like Good Kid, Mad City, where it was like a, yeah, story, a story in that way. It's just more. 
I don't know. I guess I mean because of the titles of the different tracks, it's just each song touches on a different like feeling or something like that. So I mean, I, I mean, I liked it. Well, yeah, I, mean, I saw it, I saw that. I did peep that. No, I was okay with that. I like that was somewhat interesting. But I'll be honest, like I like Kendrick, but like Good Cat Kid, Mad City, listen to it once. Really? Butterfly, listen to it maybe once. I never finished it. Like I never listened to the like. There were several listen? tracks I just skipped through. What do you through. listen to? Not Kendrick that much. I don't have a problem with him. Yeah. But, well, I mean, you like, gotta li- you gotta listen to it more than once, I think, to really appreciate. Yeah. Not not in a like you gotta hear it fifteen times until you like a Drake song, but like mm-hmm. you have to like. I don't know. I think you need a. I think you need to give it more time. Because I think I could listen to Good Kid, Mad City like I don't know, twenty times. I don't know mm-hmm. a bunch of times. <laughs> and the last yeah. one I listened to a lot. Well, the so. thing is, like, so Pimple Butterfly, it was a lot of weird music. Well, music that, like, I don't know, maybe it's normal to some people, but I didn't, uh, it was just, it wasn't, like, normal rap music to the me. Pimple Butterfly? Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. No, I was thinking the first one. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it was different. There was some I different stuff. Yeah. Which is fine. Because uh, I'll, I'll speak on that in a little bit, but, um,. I don't know. I listened to it, and then I guess something else caught my ear, and I just never came back to it. Because uh, the other thing is, like, I, I use Spotify to listen to stuff. I don't actually buy none of this music um, for, for whatever reason. So if I'm not at my computer at home, I can't, or, you know, on my laptop somewhere. Never get back around to it. I can't listen to it because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have it in my car because I would have to pay for it <laughs> or I'd have to download some bootleg somewhere. And I'm not going to have it on my phone because, again, I'd have to buy it somewhere. So, And I don't drive that much. So I, those will be the places, that, other places I would listen to it outside of, you know, at home. So that's part of the reason as well. But, um, yeah, that other yeah. type of music thing, I, I, I don't think it's a problem. But I guess at the time, I just wasn't feeling it. And so I never went I, back and listened to it. I mean, I can understand how it could be off-putting if you were expecting something else. You'd be like, whoa, what's going on here? I mean, I, honestly, I got excited because I was, I don't know, I wanted something different. So I was like, oh, okay, this is different. I like this. Um, yeah. Kind of like like when first time I listened to Childish Gambino's new album, I was like, oh my goodness, what? <laughs> it was like, you know, I was not expecting that at all. It was just, have you listened to that yet? I listened to a couple of tracks. I haven't, I never all right. finished So you, you, okay, so <laughs> you, you, you can't have an you can't have an opinion on this. <laughs> like yes. nothing you've ever finished. You're like, yeah, I listened to a couple of songs. Well, so I listened. I, I listened to some stuff on YouTube, and I was like, let me remember to listen to the album. But I just didn't get back around to it. Uh, so I pay for Google Music, mm-hmm. which is like ten dollars a month, and I don't know. So you that's can what I pay for. Listen to whatever. Yeah, and I can download it whatever i mean i can buy it too if i wanted to but i just download whatever i want or i can just stream it wherever mm-hmm. and that's <laughs> that's that <laughs> it's like I, I feel like it's worth it to i don't know because i mean because i like i listen i listen to a lot of stuff and i like getting new stuff to listen to so yeah and I like listening th- to things more than once so so what happens is like in my car i have in my car has a cd player because it's from the late early 2000s so I have CDs in there, but I haven't. Made Wait, like, new cars don't have CD players? I don't know. I don't know anything about new cars, really. I don't think most no. of them do. I don't think so. I think most really? of them have like a like a aux input. Really? Yeah, or they have like oh. an app, like a, a Spotify app or a, a iTunes With no app. No CD player? I doubt it. Wow. It's 2017, bro. But uh, um. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um. Yeah, the whole, all this is to say, like, I have a bunch of CDs in my car, and then my, my radio in my car, I can plug a U, USB port into it, a USB stick. So I had a USB thing, and I mm. had music on my computer, so I put a bunch of stuff on there and put it in my car. But then, you know, after, like, a week, I had listened to everything, so I was like, I need to remember to take this USB thing inside and put some new music on it. But I just haven't. And I was going to do it tonight. I need to do it right after we finish recording this. Because, I mean, I, I end up listening to the same thing over and over, so, like, in my car, I have like Return to Forever, Big Crit, uh, his other mixtape, uh, something about a king. I forget the name of it. Mm. But, uh, King, oh, uh, wait. The one, well, what's the king without his crown? What's the car yeah, without some uh, sounds? 
Oh, that'd be my car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember. It's not important. But then it's got like run the jewels on it. I've got some like old uh, evidence, like some just random stuff on it. So I got I listen to that's what I've been listening to because I do do not listen to the radio. So um, I just need to bring up some new stuff so I can catch up on some things that it, obviously I've missed out on. Um, what I've yeah. been listening to recently, like if I'm uh, not in my car, I've been listening to that new Lupe. No, just working my How way through it. That? Not like listening to it multiple times, but just listening to it the first time. Um, How is it? Eh, I like some tracks. He, he Again, he's doing this different type of music thing. Because near the end, there's some tracks on there where it's like somebody singing, which is fine. And it's got like it's more I don't know what kind of music to refer to it as but it's not typical rap music like See, I, I can't keep up because like last time I checked he was retiring it yeah, wasn't rapping or something and then suddenly there's a song out there's an album out I'm like man I don't I can't keep up with this either you're in or you're out yeah if you're in I'll check it out maybe but honestly I mean because I know I know I used to listen to him all the time but he was that was also in the period of time where there was not that many people that were like delivering with well, yeah, with like good content that I actually want to listen to, mm-hmm. but nowadays, like, there's like, there's, I've got options. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have, you know, I'm, you know, I mean, yeah, because I'm listening to Kendrick right now. I mean, I, I need to finish it. I only, I was only listening to it once, but I want to listen to it some more. But uh, Joy Badass album, I, I only listened to it once though. I need to revisit that. I was at the gym, listening to it, never finished it, but um. No, I mean, but there's a bunch of people that I know are putting out quality stuff, and I'm hoping Big Crip puts out an album this year. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's yeah, a. I mean, if you're a Crip fan, check out the song. I forgot the name of the song, but on Lupe, there's a Crit, a song with Crit on it, and oh, okay, um, he makes he kind of makes Lupe and Rick Ross look bad on there. So oh, I listened to the I new did Rick listen. Ross. Well, oh no, I, I did too. I listened to a couple songs. I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I listened to the. Birdman diss track or whatever, a couple of the songs, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't finish the whole it was, thing. It was it was um I mean it's a cool album. I mean yeah, I mean I I'll listen to a Ross album. It's it's yeah. listenable. It's not like he's not a terrible lyricist. No, the I mean it's it, good. It, it 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 serves its purpose and yeah, I mean it was fun in a moment and I got that out of the way and then other stuff came along and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, I mean, but I, I mean, I, that's why I pay for a service, or at least I can give things a chance, and I can actually, you know, give it a good listen, mm-hmm. and then I'll decide if I'm going to stay on it or whatever. But I mean, the other thing I listened to, I was going to mention, it's probably been like almost a month ago. I listened to the Fat Joe Remy's. Uh, oh, yeah, I was listening to that in the gym once. Yeah, it was a one timer for me. Definitely, a it one-timer. was cool. I mean the other. I, mean, I, mean, I felt like uh, you know you sometimes you watch a movie in the theater mm-hmm. or whatever, and then you realize like all the good parts were in the preview. That's how I felt. Because <laughs> like all the way up was probably the best song on the on the whole project to me. I feel like there was something else on there, but I, I don't know. I mean, just it was that Ty Dolla Sign song, Money Showers or whatever. Uh, I'm just oh yeah, I've just never been like I mean I mean I'm aware of them or whatever but I've never like bought a Fat Joe album or a Remy album so I, I, nah, I've never listened to any of her like a full project I've listened to whatever was on the radio so yeah I, I just really did <laughs> yeah I just wasn't I'm just not that invested that I am gonna I mean there are people that I'm like okay I mean because even Joey Bad I hadn't listened to him a whole lot of times but I knew of him I knew he was good and I was like this time I was like let me actually check out because I did this one song recently um what is the name of it? It's like the single that he has out right now is really good. Mm-hmm. And I really like that. So I was like, yeah, let me actually give him a chance because I, I knew he was good. I just, I don't know, didn't have to. Well, I like I that know, song he region. did with, I forget who was on it, but it was like him and Black Thought was on it. Oh. And some other people. I don't remember who. But anyway, Black Thought went in and like Joey held his own. So I was like, okay. No, he's 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 good. No, he's really good. But what he's, I was gonna say issue there. about the whole Fat Joe Rumi album is like, well, first like it wasn't that great to me personally. I didn't care for it. Yeah. And then the other thing is like, 
I, it seemed like it was Fat Joe featuring Remy because Remy might have had like a couple bars on every song, but yeah. there was very few songs where she had more than maybe like sixteen or thirty-two or something like that. She wasn't like yeah. she wasn't carrying a whole song at all, and like well, they, like I she mean, let's say it this way, Sheether probably had more of her rapping on it than the whole uh, Plot Diploma whatever the album did. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care for Fat Joe rap wise. He's all right, but I mean, he's good. But I mean, there's plenty of rappers that are good that I just don't listen to just because I just I don't. I just don't. Uh, he's all right, but like. I don't know. I'm not trying to. Hear I mean, his him. technical skill, I wouldn't call him wag, no. but I wouldn't. He's not you know, amazing. He's not in no ways. Yeah, I just, I mean, he's been around for a while. I mean, I just don't, I've never, I just never really wanted to listen to this album, really, honestly. I mean, yeah. I did this time. I was like, let me check it out. I need something to listen to in the gym that's kind of hype. So the stuff of his that I like is stuff where he's featuring somebody. Like that New York song with uh, Alicia Keys and Young Jeezy or something. Uh, He's got like and uh, Little Mama, <laughs> like he's all, well, no, not that song, but he's always featuring somebody. Yeah, no, I mean he has his lane. I mean, and that's cool. I mean, honestly, I, I usually I'm happy with whatever ends up on the radio, and it's like okay, cool, I'll listen to yeah, that. Yeah, but, but I'm not gonna buy it. I, I don't. No, nah, I mean, I'm good. I mean, there's enough. Yeah, because there's plenty of people that I actually am interested in. I mean, honestly, I mean, in chance I listened to him a whole lot mm-hmm. recently. Well, not that super recently, but when that came out, I listened to that like nonstop. Because I mean, that was another one that was like, okay, this is different. Let me listen to it. So, but I mean, there's enough, there's enough people out there. Thankfully, that honestly, I have the issue of like, okay, I hope I can get be able to give this album a good solid listen before this other person drops an album that I want to listen to. Yeah, it's so, prioritized. I think Logic's coming out with something soon too, and I want. I would definitely want to be able to check that out. So I never even listened to the last one, and it was it was it was it was cool. I mean, I it could have been better. He he's His, cool, but I, I'm I just, think uh, it's not. It's I'm not he, like rushing to listen. And Lupe is starting to fall into that category for me as well because I really really like Food and Liquor too. Yeah, because he he hits you with a lot of bars on like the first five or six tracks there was some trash tracks um, in there too but it was just great and then his his, that other one he came out with food Food liquor two the cool was good well food liquor two is the one that came out with i don't know what the song was but it was a good song food liquor two was good the cool was good lasers i didn't care for uh this last one was pretty good it had like some um, weird the name artistic the stuff one. on the cover. Art, yeah, yeah, that one was actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I liked the first track, and he had some other tracks, and they were good. But I don't like that's one of the ones I've probably listened to twice. But I end up like, so what happens is like if you if you have a really good track, and then the, the track after is like eh, okay, it makes it hard. Yeah. I'm like, all right, let me just go back and listen to that other one again instead of listening to you sing or whatever you're trying to do. And that's what happens on that one is I'll I'll some of the other ones might be good, but I'm like I'm still I'm still like in the days from what he said on the previous track. So I'm like, let me just listen to that one again. And I never get any farther than that. Yeah. Um Joe Button's last album was pretty good actually. Yeah, I listened to that. That was a good I listen, I mean it was usually like I listen to that in the gym, but no, it was pretty it was pretty good. I mean I don't know. I mean, I, I've there's a couple of his projects that I've picked up that I, I mean he I mean, he's good. I mean, it's not <laughs> or or to explain it, he's pretty good though. But I, I kind of like what he's doing. I mean, especially now as I'm getting up in the years, longer in the tooth, I appreciate um, adult rappers. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that that exists now. I guess you know yeah. people that are making good stuff, but they're you know. A older, so it's you know I don't know. things I can actually relate with. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it for our music segment. Uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, we we're gonna talk about it the whole time. <laughs> I'll try and listen to. 
I don't know. I just don't spend enough time. Like, so the reason why I don't listen to a lot of stuff is I'm not at my computer that much when I'm at when I'm not at work. If I'm at my office, then yeah, I have different situation there, so I can't really listen to music that much. You just don't want to turn into one of those people that's like, oh, there's no, you know, hip hop hasn't been good since Biggie or something like that. And it's like you obviously haven't listened to anything since then. No, nah, I'm you know, definitely not gonna be that come that person. You don't want to. You don't want to turn into that person. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm listening. <laughs> there's been nothing good since. Well, it's like, well, all right, you haven't supported anybody recently, obviously, and so don't or listen to anybody. So you can't. You don't really qualify for that opinion. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. On to design topics. What I wanted to talk about this week uh, was um, basically like was two things: um, choosing who you work with, which is one part of it, and then also how that connects to like getting fulfillment and enjoying it, j- enjoyment and happiness out of what you do. Um, so I recently finished a book. It's called, I think it's called The Business of Graphic Design or something like that. I found it on Audible. So I was on Audible and I searched for design or graphic design. And that was literally... The, oh, you got time for that? That was literally the only book that came up. <laughs> hey, I pay for Audible so every month. <laughs> so um, in the book, it was talking about... Um, it's an older book, so a lot of the information is kind of a little bit outdated. But it's talking about different... Um, principles from different design firms and how they approach their business and stuff like that. And one of them was talking about how um, how they choose the people they work with and basically they try not to take on projects they're not interested in and excited about and things like that because when you take on those types of projects um, in some cases the work won't come out as well and in a lot of cases the work may come out acceptable to the client but it won't be something that you're excited about or something that you could put in your portfolio and things like that i know we've talked about this before but i wanted to kind of talk a little more about it and get your perspective on that well with choosing clients um a lot of the times i'm down to do most things (laughs) Every once in a while, I'll get something that I don't want to do, or I just don't feel like I want to even involve myself with that. Usually, I mean, a lot of times that's like with political stuff, um, or not political stuff necessarily, but for a politician. Usually, I don't want to be involved because there's one time I did work for a politician and she didn't pay me, and it scarred for life. So now I'm prejudiced against politicians, <laughs> but um, also current. Uh, political climate but um i just don't want to i don't know usually i don't want don't want to be involved with that um sometimes it's because i don't think the person is all the way serious about what they're doing and so they may not be all the way serious about paying me so i don't want to get involved when i feel like i am i mean because i can come up with ideas for days but i don't I don't know. They have to show me that they actually want to do this because I don't want to be the one raising their baby, basically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what yeah. I mean. Like they come with half an idea, and because you were just somebody that's creative, you have all these ideas, and it's like, all right, well, why am I doing all yeah. this? <laughs> this is your idea. Why am I dedicating all this energy, you know, to well, you? Well, sometimes you could feel like. You know, uh, you know, you hired me to be a designer and design to design something for you, but you really need, I've told a customer this before, like you really need a consultant, someone to consult with you on like how to run a business or how to market. I can do those things for you. you know, I have an MBA. I have, I know how to do this stuff, but you didn't hire me to do that. And so yeah. I've, I've, I've gotten in that situation where it's like, I really want to help this person more because there's the potential, but they don't have the money or they didn't hire me for that. And they, you know, they don't want to hire me for that. And so it's like, well, I'm going to end up having to design something, not having to, but I'll be in a situation where in order to meet the customer's expectation, I'm going to design something that will work for them, but on the overall scheme of things and the scope of the project and their overall overall business goals, they could have done something way better had they, you know, planned ahead and thought it through and talked to someone who knew. 
Yeah, I mean, that goes back to like something we talked about in one of the previous episodes about, um, I think it was the e-commerce one, just people knowing, I don't know, <laughs> how serious they are about their business and what they're doing and everything and, you know, how involved they plan yeah. on being. Find that out, so. Well, um, I'll say for myself, in terms of picking what I'm going to work on and who I'm going to work with, uh, when I started out, there was it was no there was no process it was like if you were willing to work with me and willing to pay and sometimes even not willing to pay i was going to do the work because i just needed to do work and i Mm -hmm. needed to get my name out there and need you know people to see what i was doing so i was not a choosy lover but (laughs) (laughs) but um now I try and be a little more choosy because I have been in situations like, like kind of like what you were saying where uh, it's something I don't care about. I'm not even interested in trying to do and I'm not going to do good if I'm totally not interested. Yeah, I mean, you want to have some kind of, you know, be able to muster up some kind of passion for <laughs> what you're working on. Otherwise, it's going to reflect in your work. Um, sometimes you can fake muster that but if it's a longer term project I mean it's going to burn out after a while I know even me like even when I am working on a project if it has to keep on going back for rounds of changes I get to a point where I just lose my opinion Mm. (laughs) just like I don't care anymore I just want to be done with this I really I don't care I mean so I, I mean I hope I mean that's happened to me but I really try to avoid that happening because at that point it's like I might as well start over fresh because of you know you make too many changes to one thing and it doesn't even feel like your thing anymore and like you're just literally doing something just to see what they're going to say when you get done yeah. you know I completely understand so wh- uh, besides just not working with certain clients it, what else do you try and do to kind of prevent that type of burnout I guess Um. Well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know because it keeps on happening to me. Um. <laughs> well, it's it's usually one. I mean, if you're working with a client and you're basically working, you know, it's designed by committee kind of thing. Then that's gonna just gonna keep on happening. And sometimes it's hard to get away from that, especially if they're you know paying. Yeah. You. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you can try to whittle it down so that you are only working with, I mean, if it's an ongoing job and you don't want to not work for them, I mean, you can talk to them and try to, you know, set up a point person, like, okay, I will work, you know, this person is in, you know, charge Mm -hmm. basically, or this person will present to the committee or whatever, but it won't, you know, it's not me in presenting to everyone because there's, um, on that show, Abstract, the I don't know if you finished that yet, but there was this lady, it's a graphic designer, she was talking, she had like a chart of where productivity, you know, <laughs> I mean, well, not productivity, but just how with the course of, a, you know, presenting a design to somebody and like, you know, how it goes up and down, like from, you know, you presenting and them being happy and then somebody asks a question and it drops down here and then you answer and it goes back up. And then somebody asks another question, and it's like, oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. <laughs> it dropped. The expectation keeps on dropping. Into, I mean, you got to be able to like, you know, wrap it up or something like that, or just give them a good reason so you can end on a high note, or at least at medium. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you just gotta. Some of that, it's just trial and error. Honestly, you have to kind of know how the person works the client works which is something that you don't always know right off the bat yeah. so well so what I try and do so in the in the book that I was talking about what a lot of the people were saying is that they'll often like meet with a potential client have several meetings with them talk about what they want all you know get all those details and then at that point decide if they're willing to move forward and work together whereas and that's totally not the process I've used uh, because I do most of the stuff comes in through email or whatever. So I get an email or I get a phone call and I talk to the person, find out what they want at a high level, 
and then I give them a price and then we move forward and at that point I might not even know how they want to work or anything like that I'll we'll have talked about the basics but I won't have delved deep into the details of what they want and all those all that type of stuff I'll know enough to give them a number um and I feel like if I were to spend more time talking to these people getting to understand exactly what they want that type of thing then I could more easily determine whether it's worth it to work with someone or not or if it's just going to be trouble from the beginning some people I can tell at the beginning and be like nah they're trouble I'm not going to mess with them but um, sometimes it's hard to find out it's later in the process that they turn over a new leaf or whatever the saying is and start acting funny so um, in terms of like trying to avoid getting burnt out on people just coming back asking for the same stuff or a bunch of changes and stuff like that that's difficult but I think I don't always do it but like I try and set uh, set the expectation that look you're not going to be asking me for 57 changes and I always tell people um, if you ask me for the more changes you want the more it's going to cost basically so give me all your changes at once or you know but don't give me like okay let me see it like this then let me see it like this let me see it like this because that's just gonna no that's gonna cost you more and i would try and warn them and that usually yeah. works but it's, it's different when it's based almost like somewhere that you work you're gonna you know it's almost like no getting around it they're gonna yeah you it's work your day there. job there's nothing you can do <laughs> but i think yeah presentation like a, yeah. can help control some of that yeah I know sometimes I've fallen into a thing where I don't do as much as I could with the presentation whereas if I did more I know that I could wrap some of that yeah. stuff up because um, I mean maybe you've designed all the time or you maybe you're on a tight deadline or you just I don't know <laughs> you just lost interest so you're just like here just take it just whatever but then yeah ultimately you end up doing more work if they you know want all this or whatever so I mean I've learned sometimes like if you do three designs and there's one that you really like and you think this will you know this is your star design and the other one's okay and then the third one is because they needed a third design like really talk up that uh you know give a design brief talk up that one that you want them to pick <laughs> you know so so that, it, that it's more likely otherwise they're going to pick the one that you don't yep. like so like what what would you say would be your you know with what, what kind of work would you say is most fulfilling or what would your dream like, like i don't know work be uh, that's hard to say um I guess I just like project. I like a diversity of projects. So I don't like working with the same type of customer all the time. I don't like doing the same type of design, be it a book or a poster or whatever. All customers all, matter. All of them matter, but I don't like working with, I don't like doing <laughs> the same thing over and over, like repeatedly. Uh, Cause I've been in situations where it was like, yeah. I need a WordPress site. I need a WordPress site. And I keep doing WordPress sites for people, which is fine. WordPress is easy. Building sites is easy. But after a while, I'm bored and I want to do some more design type work. I'm like, okay, I've done enough messing around with PHP and HTML and stuff like that. I want to actually design something. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I get people. I've had this happen in interviews where people ask me if I'm more of a if I like doing, I guess, print design or web design more. And I'm not sure. I mean, I told them it depends on the day. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just like to be able to switch. So, sometimes I feel like I could. Yeah, I like to be able to go back and forth. Because some days I would just like to not look at a website anymore and not know how to do that anymore. But there are other days where, I mean, but I do actually feel, you know, I get some kind of enjoyment out of, you know, building something like that and making it work and all this kind of stuff. But it's usually when WordPress breaks or, you know, a theme doesn't work properly or something like that. And that's when I'm like, you know what? I'm <laughs> okay with not doing websites. Let me just get back some InDesign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even that, you know, then you get like a round, I don't know. It, it, there's, there's, you know, 
I like, but I mean, like you, I like to be able to skip yeah. around and do different projects for people. But I mean, as far as like you know, I guess like industry or something like that. I mean, I mean, I'm working on a project now for the state of Alabama, and I kind of enjoy that work because I know it's something that will be mm-hmm. around for years, you know, and it's like a significant thing. So that's probably the one of the first times or major projects that I felt like, okay, this is actually something that that I enjoy. I feel like I'm doing good work or whatever. And like, you know, this is, you know, this is going to, people are going to see this and like, they know I did, you know, it, it's like a, it's a good feeling like that. Um, Cause a lot of the work I've done has not been, you know, <laughs> it's like something I didn't really care to, uh, I don't know. I mean, I can tell people, but it's not like something that I felt like that much, as much pride or like fulfillment as I, yeah, I'll this say, project. I, I completely I mean, agree because I've done a lot of projects where, like, the design was was good and like everything was correct from my perspective. But I knew that whatever the person was trying to do, like, what is it? Whatever, maybe it was their business plan or whatever. I knew it wasn't going to fail. I knew it wasn't going to take off. I knew it wasn't going to become big or anything like that. And so I was like, eh, here you go, good luck. But I know it's not going to work. And so those, yeah. some of them I like because okay great i have something nice for my portfolio but i know like like say okay for example hypothetically let's say somebody wanted to have a concert or whatever and they wanted a poster design i designed a poster but um i know that like maybe their target audience is not going to be drawn to this poster because for whatever reason maybe they're using people of the wrong color they don't have enough diversity the design is too conservative for that crowd or something like that so i would design something it would come out okay the customer will be happy with it but i wouldn't feel great because i know it's not going to have the impact they think they hope it would it's like it's like they ultimately needed like design agency like but they didn't have design well, not agency. Well, like they needed a design money. agency. The, they needed they needed better taste. Well, I mean, they, they needed, needed you to do. Yeah, they needed you to yeah. be more involved in it. But they didn't know. They didn't have the budget yeah, for you I to be that given involved. Them what would have worked? But they might not have liked what would have worked. They probably would have liked the results of what would have worked, but they would not have liked you know its appearance or whatever because they prefer crappy design or whatever. And then also, they. They just they weren't in tune with their audience enough to know what was good when they saw it. So they were like, "No, well, let's change it. Let's do this boring type of look." So I would do stuff like that and things like that. Of course, you know, a lot of times the money is good too, but I don't feel as fulfilled by doing something like that. Whereas if I've done projects for, that I did literally for free, that um, I knew exactly, I was able to use all like all my skills to do it. So you know, I was like. I knew exactly what audience they needed to reach. I knew exactly how to reach them. They were the customer was completely open to whatever I was going to do because clearly they weren't paying. And I did it, and it had a big impact. And people were like, "Yo, who designed it?" You know, that type of stuff happened, and that felt good. And I feel like uh, even designing like something that wasn't that great and getting paid a lot for it still doesn't feel as good as getting no money but seeing something that's actually impacting people yeah yeah I mean having that impact and you know knowing that this thing will be around for a while I mean I, I like you know being able to form a relationship with somebody I mean I think that's part of the problem is like you know somebody comes up with this idea and it's like I know that I will get invested in it and want it to be around for a while and like okay yeah I come with all these ideas we can do this and this and this and this but I know that, that. I mean, sometimes, yeah, I know that they're not going to be around yeah. for the ideas I'm coming up with. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I meant by, you know, I'm raising their baby. It's like, well, I came up with all this stuff, but like, I mean, like for this book I was illustrating a while ago, and I, I mean, every once in a while, the person I was working with, she'll come up and be like, hey, we should, you know, work on that book or whatever. And it's like, I just have all these drawings and stuff that I did, all these concepts I was thinking of, and they may never see the light of day because they gave up mm. on the project or whatever or she had a kid and got married and lost interest you know whatever <laughs> i'm not bitter um <laughs> but yeah well, i, feel I mean like, it's, it, well, it on is. that note i think uh because i work with some people that were like 
they basically said, I want to partner with you. Because once they saw, once I started to like mention some things to them, sometimes reluctantly, you know, like let's say, so hypothetically, we're in a meeting. I was in a meeting with this one client, not hypothetically. I was in a meeting with a client. We're talking about, I was illustrating a book and designing some, a website for them. We finished our meeting up and then he was like, so you got any other ideas on like ways we could make this really take off and promote his, this person had high hopes for whatever they were doing and they thought it was going to be so popular and amazing and all this other stuff. So I threw out a few ideas and, and they were all pretty simple. Like they, nothing complex, nothing like hard or expensive to do. And then after a while, the, person realized like look this person can like david can actually help me and so they offered to kind of partner with me in the situation and i was like okay well you know we got to negotiate percentages and all that type of stuff but in the end it worked out better because um if you just pay me whatever my rate is to do a logo or post or whatever for you then my motivation to make your whole thing successful and better is not as high because I'm only going to get so much money out of it. So I can just do my mediocre poster, give it to you. You're going to be happy. You're going to pay me. I'm going to move on. It's not going to be impactful. It's not going to be as big as it could have been. But that's okay. It's like the the one night stand of like yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> design work. Yeah, but it's, yeah. I mean, yeah, I would rather like form those like relationships with people or whatever. I mean, yeah, because otherwise it's just. But you know, I think one a, done, a lot out. of the people that but, you know, maybe I mean I don't know. Maybe I just end up messing with whack clients because most of the people I've uh, <laughs> yeah, I gotta have better you gotta taste have in better clients. Standards like. <laughs> <laughs> know your work. <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the people I... you work with that you work with that client that's worked well, that's, with that's so how exact, many people. That wasn't exactly what I was gonna say, but it's kind of the same thing. Where most of these people I work with, after talking to them, you could I can tell like they're not gonna stick around. I can tell they don't have money to really push uh-huh. what they're doing to the level that it could be, and I don't have the time or the resources to do it like just pro bono like yeah i just want to make your stuff successful just because so i don't and so i bounce around i bounce around a little yeah. bit obviously i have some yeah. clients that stick around and i'm consistent with but then there's other people that i'm just one night standing with yeah yeah i mean i, I don't i mean i mean the the ones that i actually do like like the work i I've done with sometimes I've thought of like reaching back out to them, you know, seeing if they need anything else or whatever. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah, I'm the same way. I'll do something and then I'll go and move on. And unfortunately, I mean, I've seen people and their client, I mean, their whatever their project was, whatever business it was, it's gone. By the time I check back in, I was like, hey, you still doing that? And they're like, no. I'm like, all right, well, cool. You know? Which, I mean, because I did this whole website and a bunch of stuff, like, for this one company that was making, like, hair products. And, like, and like I felt like a couple of months later, I went and checked on their website, and it was, like, down. And I was like, I, okay, well, <laughs> I guess all that was for nothing. I mean, well, I got paid, but, I mean, I don't know. It's just unfortunate to see that happen. I, don't well, know I think what, that I don't know kind of goes happened. back to, I know we've had a discussion about portfolios and stuff like that. And that's so the clients you choose can have a a real effect on your portfolio and your ability to attract new clients because like you said i I have several people like some of my first clients ever i got when i came out of college doing graphic design most of them don't exist anymore um you know they were websites or, or businesses and stuff like that that literally don't exist anymore or just you know they went defunct or the people moved on and did something else went back to their day job or whatever so nothing's wrong with them doing that but i feel like possibly if i had chosen uh more carefully some of the clients some of these people might have still might still be around and not that i'm like yeah. the for the person that would kind of make them stay around but maybe if i had been more uh more willing to help you know 
like more willing to do uh, share ideas and be more of a mm-hmm. consultant then maybe someone would have stuck with it because i know like a lot of them the failure yeah was, i mean but that's their failure was I mean, but that's evident their, that's... just in talking to them about like what who they're trying to reach and that type of stuff when you talk to somebody about that and they have no clue or and they just kind of want to halfway do stuff then it was evident to me but yeah. i was like well let me just get this money well i mean well, nowadays, I know I purposely ask people some of those questions so that even if they're not thinking about mm-hmm. it, they start thinking about that stuff so that because it's going to help them out. Like just asking those them those questions, it's not me doing the work for them. It's just me asking the questions that's going to make them think like, OK, wait, OK, yeah. I need to actually think about this stuff, you know, like designing a logo or something like that. I'm like, all right, you know. Who's your audience? You know, what is the feel you're going for? Who do you, you know, colors, like all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff that's going to make them think. I mean, I don't, yeah, I can come up with something, yeah, sure, without any of that information, but yeah. I want you to think about it. <laughs> you know, they'll save us both time and like get you, you know, thinking in the right direction. So, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, and yeah, like you're saying about, about, about the portfolio, especially about websites, it's unfortunate because it's like, yeah, I made this website, you click on it and it's gone. It looks crazy in an interview. Oh, wow. That happened to me. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what they did. There's very um, few. But every, every once in a while, it's like, man, this website hasn't changed at all. Since I <laughs> yeah, I tell people I do web design, but I don't really have much proof anymore. Yeah, because, I mean, they yeah, they disappear. They change. Something happens. Somebody else does it. And it's like, wow, well, well, I did it before. So you just kind of stick with pictures, which is, I don't know. I mean, I don't know a good way around that because I don't want to have to save a whole website. Yeah, but to even like with it. pictures, it's like anybody yeah. can take a screenshot of a site. That don't mean you did it. Yeah, it's kind of, it comes yeah. down to more show and prove uh, ultimately. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, you are good at WordPress. It's not that yeah. hard. <laughs> So that's it. So I put it on my resume. Don't ask me to do <laughs> anything in Microsoft Word, though. <laughs> but yeah. I had another question I was going to ask. I forgot what it was. Um, let me think. So when it comes to choosing clients, are, I mean, so we've talked about how we currently choose clients. If you had it to do over again or going forward, like what kind of things do you try and look for? Are there any like warning particular warning signs that you look for when you're talking to a potential client that would let you know like look I don't want to deal with this person um I would just say general flakiness (laughs) that's usually you know the thing that just makes me kind of step back like all right well you seem kind of flaky so until you show me differently i'm just going to step back a little bit because you got to show me that you actually want you know (laughs) i I want i want to feel one (laughs) i don't know so i mean it's like yeah if they seem kind of flaky or something like that i'm gonna step back because that's i mean you know something could be going on that's perfectly fine and they have a chance to prove that you know that they're not like that but you know i'm just going to be cautious of yeah i've had some people that seem real flaktastic and I was like, all right, well, just let me know when you're ready to move forward with this project. That's I've used that email a lot. Yeah. And uh, then some of them have come back and like, look, sorry, I was going through some stuff, whatever was going on. And then they proved out to be great yeah. clients. Some of them just never replied because they were they had mad flakes. They need that head and shoulders. Hey. Have you ever? Um, they were. Uh. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let terrible. you go. Go ahead and make a joke. Go ahead. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, great. Oh, so I see uh, the frosted flake. Re- frost, frosted flakes reference. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, Have you yeah. had that cinnamon frosted yeah. flakes? I haven't had any type of frosted flakes in like ever. I had some well, frosted flakes. Maybe a couple of times. Maybe back when I was in college, but they, it wasn't impressive. They weren't great. Yeah, but, you know. They ain't got, they ain't got nut, no nutty nuggets. Nutty nuggets. I haven't had that in a long time. <laughs> or, or grape nuts for the. Uh, <laughs> for the... <laughs> I've had that either. Oh, I had some the other day. They're good, good and cheap. Some honey on them. Yeah. Set. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm good. Like, if you give me some oatmeal, oatmeal is like the cheapest breakfast you can get, and I'll be full for a while. Oh, I do oatmeal most, you know, most mornings, and especially during mm. the weekday. It's like oatmeal every day. It's the easiest, quickest, cheapest, healthiest thing you can do. <laughs> and you can. But anyway, so I actually had a, a question that did pertain to our discussion. <laughs> uh, have you ever talked a customer out of whatever they wanted because you saw like they were going the wrong way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I try to point it out. I mean, it's, I mean, mainly like with, I, well, that hasn't happened for a while in a website. But if somebody was going to ask for like, oh, I want a flash intro or something like that, thankfully people are out of that, so I don't have to talk them out of that anymore. But, I mean, with the logo design or something like that or a flyer, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll you know chip in and be like, hey, well, do you know, you know, this this isn't this isn't going to be the way this is red people aren't going to see it this way or like you know maybe this color maybe this color would be better or but it's usually honestly usually not the color that i'm that worried about it's more so um just yeah i think this may work better or like you know is that the message you're trying to give i usually do it with by asking them questions Mm -hmm. about direction is and i mean yeah i mean yeah i've talked to people if you talk someone out of the whole project and and like Oh, I just realized I oh. don't need you at all. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> There's been once or twice I've talked somebody out completely out of the project. Uh, it was web stuff. Well, maybe I it have. It was web actually. stuff that they wanted. No, I think I think I may have, but I think I don't remember exactly why I did it, but it, it may have happened every once in a while where it's like you know I just I think I maybe I just didn't really want. I don't know why I did it. I don't know if it's just because I didn't really want to do the work or didn't want to work with them that much and I talked them out of it, but I don't remember exactly well, why. Well, so <laughs> the time, well, one of the times I remember doing it, it was somebody, this was a woman, she wanted a web, uh, shopping cart, e-commerce, which we talked about in our last episode, episode 15, I think. Um, no, it wasn't the last episode, it was? but whatever. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. You'll find, it was, so that would mean it was episode 14, but... Maybe. You'll find it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so she wanted some e-commerce something, and then when I got to talking to her, and she found out all she was going to have to do, she didn't want to use PayPal. She wanted to process credit cards directly, and she realized how much more stuff she was going to need to come up with in order to do it. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, uh, <laughs> never mind." <laughs> and so yeah. um, it was good because we were right at the point where it was like, okay we can get started tomorrow i need you to send me a deposit or whatever and then i started asking a few questions and that's when she decided to fall back i mean i honestly think a situation like that they're more likely to come back at some point because you didn't just just take their money yeah i mean i'll do i'll take your money if you're just doing a logo or something like that because that's not like a huge investment for you probably but you know, like a website or something like that, or more. And yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, that's a that's a you know, it's more of a project. Mm-hmm. You know, so. I don't think I've ever talked to anyone out of like a logo or anything like that. But well, maybe I have. But it's just some people. I guess they've been given misinformation, and so if I can give you the correct information, I don't mind giving it. But so I have, I feel like I need you have to strike strike a balance between being a consultant, like a free consultant, basically, and getting paid for your work. Because you know, if someone calls me, he's like, "Hey, I want to do this, blah blah blah," and maybe it's a bad idea, maybe it's just not fully thought fleshed out, and I mm. take the time to sit on the phone and talk to them about it, or have multiple phone calls and maybe an in person meeting with them. Then uh, I need some money. Because it's it's yeah. you're, you're taking well, me away from my family. You're taking me away from paying clients who I've already worked all this stuff out with, and so we can consult. But uh, I think like it may be uh, fortuitous. There we go. Um, now hopefully I use this word properly. Now I think it'd be a good idea to um, have. 
yeah, I mean, you could write it down or something like that, but like have questions yeah. in mind. You can write it down or just have this thought questions that you ask people. I know in our forum on our website, we ask a bunch of questions, which I think helps. And if people are willing to go through the trouble of answering all that, which it's not required, but then you, you know, it will help you have an idea. And then I, you know, when you do email us, I'm going to hit you back with some more questions because, you know, that's my form of casual consulting. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, let me just ask you so you can yeah. figure this out. Otherwise, I don't. I don't have to sit there and tell you everything. I mean, if, I mean, well, yeah. If I have to, if I'm walking you through it, then yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna pay for, you're gonna pay me to do it. But me just asking you questions, I think that helps them out, and it helps me not, you know, get too invested if they're not sure exactly what they're going yeah, to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Because so, I mean, either way, even if I'm getting paid, I mean, it's you know, I'm not gonna just do something for money. I mean, I gotta, you know, I could be working on something else. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense that about covers I guess most of the questions I had and things I wanted to bring up on the topic I think I, just to kind of sum it up I think it's it's very important to choose your clients carefully because um, you know like you said you don't want to end up with flaky people and stuff like that but um I think there's a bound there's just something like as the designer we have a role as well in terms of helping make our clients good clients helping yeah. make america great again but um because i feel like there's some clients <laughs> like there's some clients i've had i've dealt with that the whatever they were doing it was just interesting and it made me more uh more willing to help them and more, i was just more excited about the project so then that meant that I was willing to share my ideas with them and willing to do what it took to push the project forward. And therefore the project was successful and they were happy and everyone was happy and the work came out good. And then there's other people where I just didn't feel that motivation. And in a lot of cases, even though I didn't feel that motivation, I was motivated because I needed some money or I wanted some money. And so I just pushed through and did something mediocre. That's not going to be in my portfolio. And maybe that person thinks I'm mediocre as well, which is fine. I don't care. But um, that <laughs> happened because, like, I probably should have ended that relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get in a relationship, you see things are going wrong or not as well as you would like because either the person's got a problem or you're just not as interested in, and, you know, you're just not that into them. Then, as a designer, yeah, don't, just don't like in, in a real life relationship, you should probably, when you see that those signs, you should either have that conversation and then make a decision. Like, look, I, I'm you staying or going. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, like any kind of relationship, communication is important. And the quicker you can realize that you're going down the wrong road or the client isn't right for you or this person isn't right for you, the better. <laughs> so, yep. So, uh, any tips you have in terms of picking clients and also picking projects that will help you stay motivated and stuff? Oh, I mean, when you have to do whatever you need to for the money, I mean, I understand it. You can't always be picky, but make sure, I would say, make sure you're working on something for yourself that you love or find a, charity project that you can do something for so that at least you're doing something that means something so you don't feel completely like dead inside yeah and so you can still have Uh, something in your portfolio that you actually like yeah something you're really you know passionate about if you're doing a bunch of you know boring stuff you don't want to do find something that you can be passionate about do it even if it's something for free it'd be worth you know the you know it'll it'll help you out (laughs) mentally if you can do something that you actually like so so find the side chick if your main relationship is just for the money and just so you can survive, <laughs> find a side chick to keep you happy. Oh that that seems to be what you're saying. Uh, I don't know if this is applicable to, to real life relationships, but I don't know. That, that seems I just to be watched what Fences saying. today, so I'm going to say no, but you should watch that movie. But um, My wife has the DVD somewhere, but we don't have a Blu-ray player because, yeah. You ain't got a PlayStation yet or something? Actually, I do have a. I could play it on this computer right in front of me. So never mind. Okay. Well, yeah. What? Yeah, y'all should watch that movie. That's a good movie. Okay. But um, yeah. Um, but no, yeah. Find something that'll make you 
happy if you're just doing the stuff for money and you know listen to albums more than once <laughs> i think that That's i think other. overall <laughs> i didn't think about it at the beginning of this podcast but i do think like a lot of what we've talked about is applicable to relationships because just you, you gotta spend some time dating i guess before you plunge all the way in with a client and so i guess i've done that in some situations where like they'll send me like small things to do like hey i just need this postcard or whatever done so i'll do something simple and small and then over time we build a rapport and then i feel like i'm comfortable enough and i feel secure in myself or whatever but i feel comfortable (laughs) enough where i can go ahead and uh start doing more of the consulting stuff we talked about where i'm not it's not just them feeding me money and i'm feeding them design it's like they feed me what they want and i feed them yeah. ideas and designs and maybe some guidance in terms of things as well because I definitely have been in the situation and I'm still in that situation unfortunately with at least one client where they'll ask for like the stupidest stuff and I'm like alright I'll do it that's what you want <clears throat> and sometimes I'll go back yeah. and yeah. Uh, and then you don't want to be in that situation where you're just doing whatever you know because then you're just somebody that operates Photoshop for them yeah, yeah. I don't want to just be <laughs> a Photoshop operator or a web WordPress operator but you know, sometimes yeah. it's it's they haven't built that trust in you for whatever reason where they would trust your opinion, and I'm I'm working on that with one particular client where like they'll ask my opinion about certain stuff, and then other stuff I'm like, you know, you know, this is a bad idea, but they're so convinced that they're a bad idea they won't listen to reason. So it's like, all right, I tried to tell you, um, but the problem is in my situation, I've already committed to doing the work. If I know you have a yeah. bad idea and I can't talk you out of it, then I should probably not do the work because it's like it's only looking bad. I think the goal is the the hashtag life goals are to be able to not um, if you come on a situation like that, you can just back away and it not be a big deal for you. You can just back away and keep your peace of mind and not worry about it, you know, messing with your bank account. Yeah. In, in most of these situations that I end up in. It honestly wouldn't have affected my bank account. I'd be fine, but it's one of those, I'm I'm I try and be a man of my word, and so like if I say like I'll build you a website, then if you come back with some stupid ideas, <laughs> I'd want to back out. But I'm like well, I said I was gonna do it, so I don't know. Yeah, so that, that's I would say just keep on asking them about. questions until they can really think about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's something we didn't talk about, like bowing out gracefully. I've done it a few times where I was like, you know, this doesn't look like something I can help you with. Because someone asked me recently, they wanted basically a three model of something. I went, I, I studied, I know how to use like, uh, what's it called? CAD. No, not CAD. But I, in college, I studied, like, you know, 3D modeling and rendering and all that type of stuff. So I know how to do it. Have I done it recently? No. Am I up on the new software? No. Am I good at it? I was. No. no. <laughs> so I told the person, like, look, uh, I could. Because they're, they're the type of person that just really wants to work with me. And I'm like, no, I, I yeah. can't do this. Uh, not effectively. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, ha- tell you I have no ability to do it. I have a little ability to do it, but I'm not going to be able to do it at a reasonable price or at a reasonable time. And they're like, so yeah, what's a I reasonable mean, price? Like what, what, what would you charge? I'm like, no, dude, that was a sign. You were supposed to go away when I said that. They wouldn't. I mean, that's that's the problem with like you, you know, you having to send your client somewhere else, or do you you hire somebody to do the work in your name, basically? Mm-hmm. You know, I you know hire somebody in India to do it or something like that. I mean, because yeah, I mean, I've had situations like that, and it's like, man, I don't know how to do that, man. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I want to say yes to everything because yeah, I could learn how to do it, but like. You can't afford to, to pay me to learn. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, it, you know, I mean, and I don't, I don't think there's any shame in doing that, and it saves everybody time. You may be feeling, you may feel like you're losing out, missing out on money by bowing mm-hmm. out, but like, it's usually not worth the hassle. If you gotta learn how to do something, and then you gotta, I mean, if you're not, especially if it's more complicated, if you're not confident, you can do it. Like it's just like you know, somebody asking me to build a plugin. I don't, I don't know how to build a plugin. 
I've seen. Yeah, could I learn? There's a plugin yeah, but... builder thing for WordPress. I've seen. Yeah, that's that's one of those things where I I could figure it out, but I don't know. I don't want to go into it and tell you I know how. Yeah, because that's more trouble. I'm gonna lose my shirt in the deal or get lucky, but I don't, I don't know. It too much at risk. Yeah, because if you get lucky, <laughs> they're like, oh, I need another one. And you're like, chill out, DJ, yeah. DJ Khaled. Or you could spend, have to spend too much time on it and get it right because you can't figure it out or you do it wrong and then you just look crazy. So. Yeah, but honestly, I've had people that because of my uh, like I'm a man of my word for the most part and I, I, and I deliver good work. If I consistently deliver and then I tell you, look, I'm not, I'm not sure I can do this, they're still willing to take the risk with me. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta let them know. Yeah, what you know, what's at stake, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I think that's it for this week. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed your Easter weekend and all the stuff, the chocolate bunnies, um, snow bunnies. Is that what they call the white Sorry. chocolate bunnies? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Alien Muffin. Uh, if you're trying to listen to this podcast, you can listen on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, and probably Google, Google Play. Play. And your radio. Maybe not the radio. So, thanks for tuning in. Uh, what was the word of the week again? Uh, for two of I'm not sure what that means, but I definitely will use it in a sentence at some point in time. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs>